to the officers and members, to the friends and my fellow co-laborers in the gospel in the pulpit, amen. amen, to this great choir and musician and to my colleague from Emory who thought it not robbery not to go to her own church but to come out today, Ms. Mercer, and support me. I greet you with a better understanding of who I am, whose I am, and what I'm to be about. It is in the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of Jesus that I greet you this morning. The scripture has already been read from the familiar story of Lazarus. For a moment, I want you to ponder the topic, it's time. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, God, dip me deep down into the riches of your treasures. Bring me up to be your mouthpiece, God. It's not about me, but it's about you and your kingdom. God, right now, speak to me as you speak through me. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The educational module for this month has been about setting SMART goals. The first Sunday was S, setting specific goals. The second Sunday was M, measurable goals. The third Sunday was A, attainable or achievable goals. And R was relevant or realistic goals. And today's goal is T and SMART for timely goals. Now, timely means opportune, you know, right in the right season. Time is defined as a measurable period during which action or process or condition exists or continues to go on. Now, many of us have made some goals. The question is, you have not made a SMART goal unless you have put that goal in some type of time, some time frame, some duration, some hours, some date, some beginning, some ending. Because without time, you really can't launch into execution of a goal. Mm -hmm. Now, many of us made some goals at the beginning of the year, amen, we're going to the second month of 2016. Amen, so I want y'all to participate. When I state a goal that you made, I just want you to lift your finger, amen. <laughs> just lift your finger, amen. Uh, so you said I'm going to exercise more in 2016. Just lift your finger, amen. You said I'm going to eat better, cut out some of that fast food and cook more, amen. Uh, you said things like, Oh, I'm going to fast at the beginning of the year. Maybe Daniel's, maybe another one, amen. Uh, maybe you said I'm going to get uh, some new employment or change jobs or get a second job, uh, amen, amen. Maybe you said uh, I'm going to get my finances in order this year. You know, I'm going to do better than I did last year, amen. Maybe you said, you know what, I'm going to attend Bible study or I'm going to attend more regularly, amen. Or maybe you said I'm going to invite some folks to worship this year. Yeah, I'm up. Hey, Amen. Maybe you said, I want to get closer to God this year. Amen. Amen. I think I went through everybody's neighborhood. Amen. These are good goals. But unless you have stated some time around these goals, they're not smart and they're more likely not to be accomplished. Unless you said, I'm going to work three days a week beginning January 4th, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, six in the morning or six in the evening when I get off work. Unless you said something like, I'm going to have meatless money and fish on Fridays because I'm going to eat better and I'm going to do better. And that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it for four months. Unless you said something like, well, you know what? I'm meeting with a financial planner. We have a date on a calendar. I have an income statement in hand and a budget in the other hand. Unless you have said, I am going to call Miss Lily May on next Wednesday and invite her to church on the first Sunday in February. Unless you put in your calendar and in your smartphone that you're going to have an alert that goes off at 6.20 in the morning so you can make the 5 minute 6.30 a.m. prayer call. 
Amen. Unless you have put some time to it, a beginning and an end, some teeth to it, it's a good chance it's not going to happen. If we haven't written it down in our planner, uh -huh. put it in our smartphones, tacked it on the refrigerator door, amen, especially all of us who want to lose weight this year, <laughs> tacked it on the refrigerator door, if we haven't given ourselves some kind of we're going to begin this day, amen. and it's going to be for this duration, and this is how and when we're going to do it, it's not going to happen. And many of you already found that out because some of those goals already then went to the wayside. It is just the first month of the year. Now, in our scripture, it's familiar. It's about Lazarus and John. Now, I want you to look at this scripture with a different lens this morning. I want you to look at it in terms of goals and time. Now, our players are Martha and Mary, disciples, and Jesus. And guess what? They all had some goals. Amen. Martha and Mary, their goal was that Jesus get himself to Bethany to save their brother. That was their goal. They had goals. They had a timeline that they wanted it to happen in. Now, the disciples, they had a goal, too. You might, it wasn't you have to go back and read the whole thing. Amen. But they did not want Jesus to go back to Judea because it was dangerous. And they were really concerned about their own skin. Amen. So they were like, they had some goals, too, to be safe. To stay alive. Yes. Now, Jesus had a goal. Come on. Jesus' goal was stated actually in verse 15. He says that they may believe. Everything Jesus was doing was centered around his goal. That they may believe. And so we have the fact that it comes by that Lazarus, the one he loved, he loved. Mary and Martha and Lazarus. They were dear to him. He would stay in their homes when he was in the neighborhood. Amen. He was very close to them. And so when he received word that he had died, he was sick, he was actually already dead. And he didn't jump up immediately and go. Now, I think that was a little disconcerting to his disciples. You know how the family is. Somebody's sick, you just didn't jump up, get in your car and catch a plane and go? Mm -hmm. The disciples did not understand why Jesus delayed. They didn't understand why he immediately did not go. Well, the first lesson is that when you set your goal and your time frame, sometimes the people around you don't understand. They don't know why you're doing what you're doing when you do it. Why did you switch jobs now? Why are you staying at home with a baby when you can make more? Both of y'all working. Why are you doing this now? Why are you not married yet? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Why didn't you buy that house already? You've been written too long. Why didn't you do it when I thought you should do it? Yeah. Amen. You know, a lot of folk have plans for you yes. and timetables and goals for your life. Amen. Amen. They ain't got nothing to do with you. That's what they think you ought to be doing and when you ought to be doing it. Amen. Amen. But you know what? You want to be in Psalm 1. You want to be like that person that's like the tree planted in the stream that's going to bear fruit, fruit in your own season. Right. Amen. Not in that season. Not on their timeline. We have to recognize that those closest to us they can't help themselves, especially when they're getting something out of it. They want to have a timeline for your activity. They want you to abide by what they want you to do. Amen? Amen. But Jesus, he understood his goal. His goal is that they may believe. And so Jesus had a chronology that was associated with that goal. So you have to understand, Jesus was very specific in delaying two days. Because Bethany was two days away. He set it up so that he was going to arrive four days after Lazarus died. Amen. Now, another lesson is that when he did arrive, how many of you know Mary was angry? 
She was upset. She didn't even come out to meet him. Because as far as she was concerned, Jesus didn't do what she thought he should have done in the time frame he should have died. Another, another lesson is that, guess what? Sometimes folk going to be mad at you. Right. They're going to be mad at you about when you choose to do what you do. Why haven't you moved down there with mama and taken care of you? What's wrong with you? You the oldest. You should have been done that. People are going to tell you what you should have done already. Amen? Right. When they think that your goal is not in the right time frame, they're going to say, you ain't. what is your problem? And then they're going to be angry with you. They may not speak to you. They may pull away from you. They may talk about you. Amen. Maybe y'all are going to have those folks in your family. <laughs> but you cannot allow their emotions or their reaction to keep you from your goal and your time frame. Amen. Amen. You have to be persistent and purposeful. And you got to stay the course. Because we all understand and sometimes we forget. Ecclesiastes 3 1 that says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. You know what your goal is and you know why you're doing it. And when it is in line with what God will have you do, you can't allow even the one closest to you to deter you. Another thing about time is that notice when Jesus got to Bethany, he did not go around trying to explain his behavior. He did not say, excuse me, no, no, but Mary, Martha, the reason I delayed was, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, disciples, let me help you understand. I set this goal, and the reason I came two days later was, one of the problems we have is that because we don't like people being mad with us, we don't like folks getting their feelings hurt, we feel the need to explain our actions when it's in line with not only the chronology, but the kairos, the perfect timing of God. When God has given it to us, sometimes we just need to keep our mouth shut and let the outcome speak for itself. We need to keep some things close to us because God did not mean for the enemy to know some stuff. And we just feel the need to defend ourselves, defend our actions. When God said, I didn't tell you to do that. Just walk and do and go. When I say walk and do and go. And so... Jesus shows up. Now, Mary and Martha and the disciples have no idea of what's about to happen. But because Jesus had the right chronology and he has the right season, he knows exactly what's about to occur. Amen. So when he says, Lazarus, get up, it's not any doubt in anybody's mind that it's God. Because, see, it was believed in ancient times that the spirit hovered over the body for three days to see if it can re-enter. It hovered, and there was a lot of people who believed that. So what did Jesus do? He didn't want any doubt. No, the spirit didn't just hover and come back in. I'm going to let you know that you might believe in God. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come the fourth day. So Lazarus is not dead, just dead. He's good and dead. Amen. Ain't no doubt. So that when Jesus, through the power of the Holy Ghost, raised him from the dead, there was no doubt. All the people could say was, but God. But God. God. See, Jesus met his goal and Mary and Martha, unbeknownst to me, them got their goal as well. But he did it a certain way. He set a goal. He set a time frame for which that goal was to happen. That goal was just not his goal, but it was a goal that was set in the perfect timing of God. And so when it happened, it manifests as nobody but God could do this. That's what we have to remember, family. That when God says do some crazy stuff, you know the woman who's 48, who pregnant and everybody say, oh, you too old, you need to abort, the baby going to be crazy and sick. And, and she says, oh, no. And when she has that healthy baby, all the people around her say, but God, mm-hmm. but God. Amen. You know, when you leave that good job you've been on for 15 years and you venture out into a new business and you in your 
early 50s people call you crazy, but you know what God has put down into you and God say, step out, I got you. And then 10 years later, when it's a boom in success out of this world, all those naysayers say, but God, there is no way it should have happened. But when you set a goal and then you put some teeth to it by putting some time to it, and then you know it's in the will of God, then you are to be a success. But God and the people, see, you become their witnesses in this sin sick world. Individuals look at your life. See, they may not know God, but they know you. And sometimes what you go through and how you, how you go through it and how you come out of it, speak to them. How in the world was he able to do that? How in the world was she able to do that? But God. And so, beloved, we need to understand that the woman who went back to school, I know her personally, 55, and folks said, she said, I want to be a nurse. I want to be a nurse. An individual said, you too old. Why are you going back to school now? You're too old. Well, at 60, she wasn't just a nurse. She was a nurse practitioner. Hey, man, is she working in that field today? You know the world will tell you, you're too old. You're too young. You don't have enough experience. You need something more than the promise that God has put down deep in you and a plan. Because the word of God says, we make the plans. And then God directs the footsteps. Amen. And we have to believe that. And in order to believe that, we have to put some time in it. Because while a thousand years may be a day to God, we human. We got 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 12 months a year. Amen. 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 We got to put some time to stuff. And so it's time. It's time for you to go ahead and make the appointment with the advisor and go back to school and stop procrastinating. Amen. Stop the excuses, it's time. It's time for you to go ahead and trust God and invest the money in the business that has already been laid out and prepared for you. It's time. It's time to just show up at 7 p.m. on Thursday here at the Kanye's location and come to Bible study. It's time to do it right now. It's time to have that one-on-one -on -one talk with your boss about the raise that you know you deserve. It's time. It's time for us to stop shucking and jiving. It's time for us to be the church and not just come to the church. It's time. It's time, you all. It's time for us to realize that we set our goals in prayer with God's stamp of approval that we can do it and God can do anything but fail. fail. And with a God like that, why are we not moving? Amen. So the question is, what is dying in your life right now? What's dying in your life? What needs to be resurrected and what needs to be buried? Discipline encouragement, your marriage, your relationship with your children. Jesus set a goal and Lazarus was raised from the dead. He had a time. Well, I'm here to tell you it's time. If you've been waiting to do what you know God has called you to do, we have spiritual leaders hiding among us. Amen, we do. We have preachers and teachers and doctors and engineers and folks who don't want to step out. But it's time. And God says, you're human. Do the things I put your hands to do in the chronology and let me work in my perfect timing and give you the season to do it in. But for some of you, it's going to be past season in a minute. Because one thing about time, it don't wait for anyone. So as you stand to your feet, amen. If you know, I just came by to tell you it's time. It's time for those things 
that you've been praying for, that you've been wishing for. And God says, I'm not going to do what I've given you the ability to do. I've given you the ability to plan and to execute. I've given you the ability to do these things, and it's time that you do them. Some of you all are waiting on God to do some stuff, and God's like, I need you to make a step or two. Amen. Amen. Waiting on God, you know, to help you with your finances, but have you seen somebody to help you consolidate the debt? Amen. I'm just saying, it's time. You want to grow in the Lord and grow spiritually? And God said, well, you have the ability to read and write. That means you can pick up my word. That means that you can carve out some day, time in your day to read my word and study. And I've given you this ability, and you're waiting for it to be poured down from heaven. God said, excuse me, can you do a few things? Can you put me in your schedule and on the calendar if you really want to grow in God? Otherwise, it's not a very smart goal. Some of us, we've been doing the same thing on Sundays since before we knew ourselves. It means nothing. And this is harsh. It means nothing. Come here and get word and not apply it. It's like a fat cat. You got all this word. Fat cats become lazy. They just sit around and wobble because they don't utilize what they've been given. And if you've been coming here going, yeah, well, you know, I'm saved. I think I'm saved. I'm pretty sure I'm saved.